live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. This is The Ramsey Show. It's where we help you win in your life, specifically your money, your work, and your relationships. The phone number is 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague and dear friend, Jade Warshaw. And we are here for you this hour. It's a free phone call, America. And so we want to help you. Some of you are very new. We, uh, we see this in the data. We see this in the reports every day. And uh, we know that we've got some, some uh, language that maybe you're not used to, the baby steps. Uh, so we're going to get into that later this hour. That's going to be a lot of fun. Just some basic breakdown uh, to bring a lot of you into the conversation because this process absolutely works and we want you to understand it. So let's get to the phones. We start off with Ann in Sacramento. Ann, how can we help? Hi, uh, how are you guys doing? Great. How are you? Good. Um, my so my basic question is: my husband and I have recently decided to get very intentional with getting out of debt. So we're currently in baby step two. I'm very familiar with the steps. I used it prior to us getting married to, um, to get out of my student loan debt. So I'm mm-hmm. very familiar with the intensity and everything. Um, so five years later, with not being super intentional with our budgets, we mm. start to get on the same page. Um, but my question is, I wanted to do FPU. He wasn't open to it, didn't think that I would be for him. I even asked for it for my birthday present. Um, and then he recently decided, okay, let's try it. And last night was supposed to be our first class, but unfortunately, the coordinator didn't show up. It was a virtual class, and so now he's Shoot. kind of put off on it. Um, and doesn't want to do it anymore. And I was super hopeful in, in, in that it would teach us both the baby steps together versus me just teaching it. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just wondering, do I keep trying to push to do FPU, even yeah. though it's now a topic of contention, or just focus on, you know, okay, let's just focus on our budget and getting more gazelle intense, um, trying to get out of baby step two. Look, uh, I mean, I hate that that happened. Something must have, there must have been some extreme, extenuating circumstances with that. But I would keep trying because what you said, I agree with. As long as you're the one teaching him and it's kind of like if he's viewing that as you, even if you're not intending to, but if he's viewing that as you kind of like, this is what we have to do and here's the steps and here's like he, it sounds like his personality is not feeling that. So I would keep pushing to have you know, Dave and the other personalities be the bad guy in that case and let the, let us teach it to you. Um, so I would follow up and find out what happened with that. But I would definitely keep trying for it because here's, at, at the end of the day, here's what happens when a couple is trying to get on board, get both spouses on board. You start kind of, if one spouse doesn't want to do it, you start compromising. And when you start compromising, it, it doesn't go the way you want. Cause in our minds we think, Oh, we're compromising. Like that's a good thing, but it's not because what happens is you start just being ish. And when you're ishing, yeah, right. You're, you're not doing it full force. And before you know it, you've looked up and it's been five years and you still haven't really made any headway. And not only are you tired and you're frustrated, he gets the right to be like, see this thing that we tried didn't work. Right. Because you did it kind of halfway and you never saw anything go through with it. So I would push to say, like, we're doing this or we're not doing this. Like, like we're going ham on this, because here's the thing. If he says no, the ish is going to get hit the fan anyway. Right. Because you're going to keep living right. out of control. And pretty soon something great happens when your back is against the wall and the other walls are closing and you realize you do have to make a change. So I hate for it to get to that point. But at the same time, sometimes when you split the difference on this, it becomes do you see what I'm saying? It actually backfires on you in the long run. So I would push to get on the same page. And that is, in this case, him jumping over to your page, not you, you know, ripping a page out of your book and him ripping a page out of his book. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And so he's definitely on the same page about getting out of debt. Like I just started a second job and he's currently looking um something that can also work with his current work schedule. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely on the same page about being more intense, but you know, I want to go 
after that. Like yeah. I want to be on the same page with our three to six months. I want to be on the same page with, you know, all the, basically all the baby steps. Um, so that's what I was hoping FPU would be for. Yeah. Um, uh, but now like, he's like, we need to get a refund call to get a refund. And so like, so now yeah, I have to like, no, well, I agree with you. Do all that. That's a cop out. That's a cop out. I don't think he wants to be on the same page with you. I'm not something's not adding up, but I'm not saying that you're that you're not telling us the truth. I'm not sure you're getting the whole story. Because mm-hmm. he either wants to be on the same page with you or he doesn't. And so if he wants to be on the same page with you and he wants to get out of debt, then you're going, This is a great plan. Whether or not our coordinator and whatever happened there, we'll get to the bottom of that. In fact, Austin, let's make sure we get customer service involved with this with Ann to make sure that we get to the bottom of what happened uh, because we want to serve you well uh, there. But he's, he's using this as a cop-out. Mm-hmm. And and so this is time for very serious talk. And you have to – this is a marriage conversation, not a financial conversation. Mm-hmm. And, and and I'm just going to call it and, – and, and by the way, show him this. I don't care because, yeah. dude, let me tell you something. If your wife says – that she's stressed out by this money situation. She wants this. She doesn't feel safe. Whatever's going on, and you're saying yes, I'm in, and and you're using this uh, snafu or whatever happened last night as a I want my money back and I'm out. You were looking for any excuse possible, right. and I would dare say, my friend, you are manipulating her because you really don't want to go all in. Mm-hmm. And and Jade already discussed the the negatives of the ish. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I just think, Ann, this is you saying to him, I need you to do this for me. I want you to do this. Uh, it's it's a marriage conversation, Jade. Yeah. I, 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 this guy is, uh, he's not all in. He's not on the same page. No, he's not all in. You know, it's interesting, this whole thing of, I feel like we find that a lot, Ken, where it's two spouses and one is like, I'm totally on board. And the other mm-hmm. one is like, I'm not. And the call we get so much is how do I get my spouse on board? And they're, it's always hit a point of, they've said, you know, we've compromised and we've tried to work together on this. And, you know, he, he or she doesn't want to go all in. And so we've just done the best we can. But, you know, you look up five years later and you've still just made no headway. In some ways, you've gone further into debt. And I love what you said. It's a cop out. And in some ways, compromising is a good thing. But in other ways, compromising is a cop out because you end up with, you know, one black shoe and one brown shoe yeah. and you look like a fool in the end and you're tired and you're worn out because you didn't do the plan as written and the plan works as written. It doesn't work when you do these various versions of it that you just pulled out of your, you know what? Well, I think what's going on here is, is that I think he absolutely does want to be debt free, but he does not want to do what it takes to be debt. That's right. Now, there's a very big difference. Uh, We can love the idea of a better future, but not love the idea of doing what it takes to get said better future. That's That's the difference. That's the the bridge between someone who is in any area of their life uh, not happy with where they are. Uh, At some point, you got to go, you know what? If I want it that bad, then I want to do what it takes. He's not there yet, unfortunately. may take a little bit more pain and frustration to get him there. But, Ann, we're on your team. Hang on the line, Ann. We're going to figure out what happened, if there was anything going on with our coordinator, and we can make make good on our promise. Uh, But, no, don't get the money back. Make him show up for the class. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAM or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show, where we talk with you about your life, specifically your money, your work, and your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman, Jade Warshaw. With me this hour, 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Matt joins us now in Bristol, Tennessee. Matt, how can we help? Hey, thanks for having me. How are you guys? Great. What's going on? Awesome. I just wanted to first uh, thank you guys for everything you guys already do. I always joke with everyone saying that uh, I was raised by three parents, my mom, my dad, and Dave Ramsey, and they just instilled that at me in a young age. And I just want to thank you guys for everything y'all do and, and just the uh, information you guys give out. But I uh, don't want to hold too much of your time. just wanted to ask a quick question. Um, I've been out of school for about a year, year and a half now. Um, I currently live in an apartment, and my lease is up in May. I've lived here about three years and absolutely love it. Um, but I do have a uh, – I did make the decision to get a German Shepherd, and uh, <laughs> space is a little bit small. Um, it's funny because actually we actually made a trip down there in March and visited the Ramsey Show and went to Cookville and got him. And he's, he's the best thing. He's, he's awesome. I love him. But uh, obviously that's a, that's a big demand of having a backyard, and one day I want to be able to – uh, get one, but just doing it the right way. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, like I said, my lease ends in May and just kind of want to take the steps of eventually going to, to getting a house. I love that. Um, so let's find out if you're even close. So I'm assuming you're debt free based on what you said about all the Dave Ramsey stuff. Do you have three to six months of of expenses saved? I do. Yes, ma'am. I, um, I went to, uh, I went to school, graduated, um, after about eight years, graduated last uh, last May and have just been working and doing as much overtime as I can and finally have all debt paid off and um, have all have about a three to six month um, savings plan set up just in case of emergencies and just kind of want to I just I just don't want to go in because I know that the now is a good time to buy one because it's not really going to get better. But then again, too, I don't want to well, go overboard and. Well, the best time to buy a house is when you can afford it, right? So kind right. of scrap that out of your mind of, of is the market telling us it's a good time or is the market telling us it's a bad time? The best time and a great time to buy a house, no matter what the market says, is when you can afford it and you can put the right down payment down and all of that. So let's put that in our brains. Um, so you've got, do you have three months or six months of expenses? Because it's just you, right? Yeah, it's me. I, I have I have six months. Great. Excellent. Um, So what do you have saved in way of a down payment? Have you done any research to kind of find out what that down payment should be? Well, I mean, I don't want to do anything below 20 percent. That's kind of where I'm at. And I think I'd Love be able that. to get that um, by that time frame. Um, okay. I've been living on a budget pretty consistently in the past about four months and have gone over it. But I mean, have been able to adjust and not make not make uh, purchases that I shouldn't, and um, just want to kind of gauge on on when that should be shown. I mean, yeah, I, I don't. I feel comfortable living another year here. Um, I, I love where I'm at, and I think that I'd even be able to put an even much bigger down payment, and, and maybe even get a little bit more. But I love that. Um, I just want to go about it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. So the first thing is doing your research to find out. Okay, what am I looking at? What do those? What if is what I'm looking at? Can I afford that? And so it sounds like you've done that. You want to put 20 percent or more. I think that's great. You know, our guidelines are somewhere between five and 20 percent. The 20 percent, obviously, you are avoiding private mortgage insurance, which is great. And Mm -hmm. if you're able to do up and beyond that, I think that's excellent. However, um, I would not necessarily let that keep you because it's going to be a moving target the way the market is like everything's always going to go up. So you trying to be like, oh, I'm going to get to 40 percent like that could be an ever moving target. So once you get to like, I'm pulling the trigger as once I get to 20, um, that's kind of the way I am okay. um, with this market. I mean, if you wanted to wait it out, you could. But my point is, does that make sense? What I'm saying is that that target could move again by the time you get that extra 10 percent saved to where your 10 percent right. has now been, gone back. That's to what 20. I've been thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's what I've been thinking about where I save up and then the insurance rates go up and up and uh-huh. up. And it's almost as if I'm just kind of playing catch up when. I mean, I'm not in any rush or anything. I know right. that finance, that's not something smart to do is be in a rush with finances. That's right. Um, but I mean, it would be it would be ideal to, to be in a house about a year, year and a half or Excellent. so. Excellent. And then, of course, as long as you're looking at 15 year fixed rate mortgages, have you looked into that? You're not looking at 30 years, right? Right. I am. Yeah, I'm looking at 15 years. It's just a matter of being able to find something I'd be comfortable in uh-huh. um, without having to do. I mean, fifty to sixty percent of my income. I mean, I mean, no, no, no. Uh, you want no more than that, no but. more than twenty five percent of your take home pay is what you're aiming for, right. and that your take home pay is. Um, you don't have to worry about what it. Uh, well, you shouldn't be. In, 
what what do I want to say? If you're investing, if you've already started investing 15%, it would be what it is before your investment dollars, right? So it's 15% of yeah. that money, then your 15% is going away. Like that's what we're looking at. It doesn't have to be like 15% of your, you know, pre-tax after, inve- like after investment, after insurance. We're not looking at that. It's just your take-home dollars, 25%. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Right. Yeah. It's just, it's one of those things where I've, I've, I, it's almost as if I get on Zillow every night and just calculate stuff out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people do that too, but it, it's just one of those things where I'll calculate it out and I'm like, well, that, that more, that mortgage payment's going to be, I mean, 30% of my income, but if I wait a year and a half, it could be 25 or, I mean, I, I mean, yeah. that a little bit, but it's like 50 or 40 to 50 now. And then, um, I mean, being able to afford it just based on the down payment, but with how the market's moving, I just wanted to kind of so, get it. So, well, let, let me ask you what, about that then. For- and, and Ken can take the ball from here, but your income is what it is now. What do you see it doing in the next one to three years, one to five years? It would most likely say about the same, if not a little bit more, but not too much. Yeah. Then, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't creep much above that 25 percent. It would be different if you're like, yeah, I'm getting a certification and that's going to cause my income to rise. And if you're like, hey, some of these are looking up to 28, 29, that's a little bit different. But I would not creep past much, much more past 25 if you don't see a, a path to increasing your income anytime soon. OK. Yeah, I man, I, I think you're itching for this house more than you're letting on. You keep coming back to it, and I'm just going to speak truth to you as an older brother. You need to stay off Zillow because the more you're on <laughs> Zillow, the more you, you know, it, let me just tell you basic psychology here is we act on what we focus on. And if we're looking at Zillow all the time, the itch just keeps getting itchier and itchier, and you just want to scratch it. And I'd stay off Zillow. I would stack up cash. It's just you and the dog, right? Yes, it is. Dude, I, I, I don't want you going 25%. I, I think you need to relax. I think you need to be like, it's just me and the dog. And mm-hmm. and, and and you're fine. And and I would save up more money. I, I wouldn't be in any hurry. I, sure, if you want to go for a year and a half, bust it. Uh, go make some side income. If your income is somewhat limited, you have the ability to do that. But the more you're on Zillow... Uh, the more this becomes something you feel like I've got to fulfill and I'm not fulfilling this desire and you're single with a dog and I wouldn't be in a rush to get a house. I just wouldn't. The more money you could save, the okay. better because, um, you know, you're not you're not in a rush right now to where you have to get a house, as Jade said. So I, I, I would just relax a little bit. I could hear it in your voice like, oh, I got to do it. I got to be a grown up. I got to be responsible. <laughs> I got to get a house. And, and, you know, we don't know what your life's going to be like a year and a half from now. Let's say you got that money that you want for that down payment a year and a half from now, and let's say that somebody else, a significant other, a potential a mate, a life partner comes along. Well, now that now everything is, we start at, 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 at ground zero in my mind, because I'm not going to buy a house. Like, I would never buy a house if I knew that I wanted to settle down with somebody until I found that said somebody. That's me. Really? 100%. That is uh, controversial. That's, no, it isn't. It's just my opinion. But you don't I'm not know telling when... everybody else to do that. But no, I'm just no, 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 saying... I get it. But th- it's uh, Are it's you de- interesting because there's a lot of unknowns there. Right. But I'd rather have I'd rather not be locked into a mortgage. I'd rather be stacking cash, living on less than, you know, than I need to make. And and uh, and, um, and look, wait a minute, Kim, because I'm walking down this road now. So right, fine. You wake let's, up... walk, let's run down the road. <laughs> you wake up five years from I now. To start something. No, this is good. This is good. <laughs> no, Matt. I started it. Trust me. Because <laughs> you wake up five years from now and uh, Mrs. Wright still hadn't come a- around the corner. Are you still waiting to buy a house even if you've got the money? Maybe not, but and right now. But but we're not talking five years. We're talking now, which is exactly why I wouldn't buy the house in a year. Ooh. If he's dating, if he wants to settle down, I wouldn't buy right away. But that's yeah. that's not a I principle. See what you're it's not a principle. It's not a Ramsey principle I'm espousing. No, I'm I saying, got you. Me personally, I'm just this this rush to buy. It's 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 dangerous. And cash is good. It gives me options. <laughs> Renting's good when I'm playing the field. You know what I'm saying? This is the Ramsey show. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre approval and a secured interest rate. Plus, a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Back to the Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw is with me, and we are here for you. 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Let's go to Nate, who is now joining us in Salt Lake City, Utah. Nate, how can we help? Hello, my friends. Uh, my wife and I, we started our journey with Dave Ramsey about 12 years ago, um, and, and it's been a wonderful thing. Let me tell you, we, we love Dave, and we love listening to your, your show. Um, we made it all the way through baby step three. We had three to six months in expenses saved up. And then it's been a little bit of a rough year. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of months ago, I lost my job. Oh, um, we've also got some medical bills. Oh, well, thank you for that. We've also got some medical bills that stacked up. And so we are back on baby step number two at this point. Um, and we're looking for a little bit of advice on, on how, to, how to navigate these next couple of months as I'm, as I'm on the job hunt. Are you bringing um, in any income at all right now, or are you still on? Or do you have? I, I have a little bit of residual from from my previous employment, a couple of months um, of of money they set me up with, okay. um, just to help with that transition. Okay. Um, you know, I'd, our company was bought out, and I was downsized, and they they took care of me, but it's Good. not going to last forever. Sure. How? Just so we can walk through this, how much more uh, time do you have with that paycheck coming in? Uh, about three months. You got three more months before that goes away. And is it the same amount of money you were making before? Yes, sir. Okay, good. All right. So yeah. what specifically are you thinking about? What are you guys wondering about? Well, we've got, like I mentioned, some medical bills, about 2,500 in medical bills. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, just as we were making decisions to keep the lights on and things as, as we were dealing with this rough year, um, we also ended up not paying our tithing to our church for a few months. And so we, we'd like to make up that difference, which is about $2,500 there, too. Oh, I love your now, heart. So $5,000. Oh, well, what is $5,000 if I sent you a check for $5,000, which by the way, I'm not going to, but if I did, <laughs> what would that do for you mentally and emotionally in, in, in light of this call? Well, you know, that, that would take a, a lot of weight off, but um, the, the discussion my wife and I are having is do we, do we take this, this residual income I've got and do we stuff it into our baby step, which, you know, got, got dropped back down to $1,000? Do we, do we build that up or do we work on our debt snowball while I'm doing this job hunt? So is the only two and debts so that, the 2500 in tie that you're considering a debt and the 2500 in medical, or is there other debt? Well, we've, we've also got our mortgage, but, you know, that's less than 25% of our income. But those are the only two because, you know, we've been working the system for a while. Yeah, and we'll put the mortgage off. We'll leave it for a baby step six where it belongs. Um, Why don't you work and go make $5,000 while you're searching? Yeah. Why don't you just go get a J-O-B? doesn't have to be in the same you know, career I, field, but why don't you just go while you're, while you're connecting, networking, uh, applying, why not go make $5,000 uh, on the side? I'm going to call it on the side. You're still getting your severance and, and, and get the 5,000 that you want to pay the tithe and the, and the, the 2,500 for tithe, the 2,500 for medical, and then be, be all good. Why not do that? Oh, I'm absolutely open to that. Now we've we've got a little uh, ten month old at home, mm. so as soon as I go find a job, it's got to fit in around either daycare or my wife's or my wife's schedule. She works too; she's a teacher. So, um, so I'm I'm absolutely open to that. I've been looking. Um, I've, I've called in on a couple of you know temporary opportunities, but haven't found anything that's that fits in with with that lifestyle. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean lifestyle? You need a full time job anyway. What does that need to look like? What's the schedule? It, it means it means my full time job's got to pay at least um, two thousand dollars a month to cover that daycare. 
So your wife's your wife's income basically covers everything except two thousand bucks. Like that's what you feel like at the very least you need to be able to make per month. Yep. Okay. Yep. Are you There's... watching the baby right now and she's working? Is that what yes, you mean? Yes, I am. She's in the high chair in the other room. Okay. Got you. Got I you. see. Now that explains, because I'm telling you to go get AJOB. Why don't you work nights? Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm open to that. No, 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 no. Not open. So. Do it. Like there, there's a difference between I'm open to it and get busy, man. Go work at uh-huh. Walmart from six until midnight. Yeah, you'll make 2000 a month. While you're searching for right. the, the full-time job, brother. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to save you some money. Now, you can do it your way, but my way is better because you get to keep that severance money for living expenses. Go make $5,000 on the weekend. Listen, your 10-month-old does not have a concept of time. Uh-huh. I'd no, be working doesn't. Saturdays. I'd be doing whatever to come up with $5,000 to remove this weight. You use the word weight. Yeah. The baby doesn't know when you're there, and they don't know. They're not going to remember that. It's like you're a bad father. Nate, you're 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 in storm mode right now, and right. so yeah. I know that you have these debts sitting here that you're like, man, if I could just get this money, I could pay them off. Until you get something stable where you're bringing in the right amount of income to supplement your wife's income, so that you guys can keep your life going you know these are these are bare necessities we're talking about daycare and things like that right so i would take this severance money and i'd hang it back and put it with your emergency funds right now because if you don't get out there like ken said and make money do you want to know what's going to happen you're not going to have enough money to cover your basic bills next month so i would not push ahead trying to do these baby steps because you don't have enough money coming in to cover your bills so like Ken said, you've got to get out there and you've got to get any job that will take you while you're on the search for, you know, whatever that ideal job or dream right job, job is. Mm-hmm. And you want All to know right. what? Let's 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 talk about this from a little bit of an emotional standpoint, because there is something to be said. Like you said, you've been listening for 12 years. You got so far down the path with the baby steps. And then this thing just kind of blew you backwards. And it's like, oh, man, like we're failures. And it feels like that. But you're absolutely not. The, the the moral of the story here is the big bad wolf huffed and puffed, but he didn't blow your house down because you did have those things in place and you're not deeply, you're not back deeply in debt. You got, you, you're, you're trying to pay back tithes for crying out loud. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like you've just been blown to smithereens. And I think you've just got to forgive yourself and go, look, we did everything right. We had three to six months of expenses in place and I lost my job and that money was there when we needed it. And now we're just building it back up, right? Right. You know, so I love it. don't don't get down on yourself. Just get out there and, you know, it's it's about what you do next right now. Yeah, I, I agree. And I wouldn't feel the pressure to pay all 2500 and tithe back right away. You know, just yeah. just manage the situation. Yeah, Be a good right. steward of, of what you have right now. And I think that's the key. Mm-hmm. Um, really interesting. You know, uh, again, I, I see a pattern here. And again, love Nate, but... You know, this idea of I'm open to it, I'm open to it. And well, I mean, you know, I got to tell you something. Uh, if you want to change your life, you have to grab it by the neck and wrestle it down. I'm thinking yeah. of, I mean, I'm thinking of the, uh, geez, I'm going to upset some of the uh, animal rights activists. Uh, but, you know, I watch those rodeos every once in a while no, on ESPN. Ken. And they hop off and they grab the, the little calf and they wrestle it down yeah. to the ground. Yeah, That's the idea. Like at some point, you know waiting for change to just fit beautifully into the existing schedule we have mm-hmm. will get you in a situation where you wake up 5, 10, 15 years down the line going, man, I never made that change. Yeah. Where'd the time go? I mean, get after it. Yeah. Get after it. You know, you you bring up an interesting point. I've been reading this book about um, negotiating. And in the book, he says, when people say yes or you're right, you're right, you're right. Yes, yes. The, the the chances of them actually implementing that change is almost nothing. Really? The phrase that you're looking for them to say is that's right. When they say that's right, that means they understand what's going on and they understand uh, how they've been thinking and they see that you understand it too. And when you hear the phrase that's right, that's when you know there's a change that's about to implement. Yeah. And the whole time he kind of was like, yeah, 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 you're right, Ken. You're right. You know what I mean? Right. And it's kind of funny because now when I hear that, I'm like, I don't know if they're going to do it. So, Nate, I hope you get to the point of saying, you know what? That's right. That's right. I do need to get out there. I do need to get a job. 
I'm not. I, we're not failures. We just hit a rough patch. Yep. And uh, yep. that's right. All right. So I've got something for you, Nate. Hang on the line. We're going to give you the Get Clear Work Assessment just to give you some extra clarity and affirmation on the type of work that you were designed to do. And then the book From Paycheck to Purpose, which is the guide to the next gig for you. Hang on the line. We appreciate the call, Nate. So happy for you and that 10-month-old. But get busy, my man. Let's take advantage of that severance, not just use it. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, Dr. John Deloney here with some great news. You get to choose. Whatever you do, good or bad moving forward, the choice is yours. And when you're intentional about making good choices over time, they become healthy habits, like choosing to slow down and make time for a daily practice of prayer and meditation. One thing that has helped me with a daily practice of meditation and prayer is hallow. Hallow is the number one prayer app in the world, and they're giving you three months free to get started. That's three months free to prioritize your mental health and be intentional about finding peace through calming music, prayers, meditation, and more. And Hallow isn't just Catholic. You can tailor the content towards your faith tradition. If you don't have a faith tradition, this is a great place to learn more about it. From scripture readings and prayers to journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice mindfulness, build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life, and choose peace. Remember, Hallow is giving you 90 days free. Imagine the peaceful habits you can establish in 90 days. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today and follow the simple prompts to start your free 90-day trial. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw is alongside 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Hey, we have a lot of folks uh, that are joining in on this conversation on all the different platforms, podcasts, YouTube, of course, radio, Sirius XM. And, uh, and if you're new to all this, you're kind of wondering where do you sit in this journey, these seven baby steps, uh, you just want to get caught up. We've got a great resource for you at RamseySolutions.com called Get Started. Just go to the main website, RamseySolutions.com, click on Get Started, and it's just a, uh, just a couple of minutes, and it will allow you to see where you are in the baby steps, get you caught up so that you can truly get started to changing your life. Also, uh, if you are enjoying the program, would you subscribe, uh, leave a great review and share? That all helps us spread the good news. 888-825-5225. Caleb is up in Seattle, Washington. Caleb, how can we help? Hi, folks. Thanks for taking my call. How are you guys? Great. What's going on? Um, So uh, just Short and sweet, I have about fifty thousand dollars in my savings account and uh, roughly thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars in a couple of debts, and I'm just wondering if I should pull that trigger and, and pay that debt. And uh, after the fact, how am I wanting to invest this savings uh, towards like a future purchase or retirement? Just kind of confused. Doing all the research myself has been really stressful. Yeah. Um, and, nice. Um, well, the answer, is, guys. the answer is yes, you should do that. And now Jade's going to tell you what you do after that. Yeah. So <laughs> where's that money sitting now, that 50000 Uh, It's currently in a high interest savings account, getting about 4% interest. Great. Yeah, that's just where it should be. And I would pull out the 13 or 14,000 and I would pay off this debt. And then assuming, uh, I don't know what your uh, month to month expenses are, but I'd like for you to keep whatever is remaining at least for three to six months of expenses. Is it just you or are you married? Um, I'm currently single, but I I live with my mother. Um, So we we share the bills together. Um, We currently rent our home. 
Um, and uh, I recently just took over expenses from my grandmother who kind of moved to a different home. So I'm taking over the rent, the power bill, all of that. Um, so I think my monthly expenses are roughly 2500 a month, and I bring in just over 5000 Okay. Uh, so I would set aside whatever three to six months of expenses for you. Um, you're a single, single guy. I know you're living with your mother, but you're single. And at some point mm-hmm. you're going to branch out. So it, three right. is fine. But if you, when you, whenever you go to branch out, which we're going to get to in a minute, I'd bump it up to six. Um, and then whatever is left, are you doing baby step four? Are you investing 15% of your income at all? Uh, yes, currently that's um, 15% of my paycheck goes towards a retirement account um, okay, that great. my company provided. So now we can get back to the other question. How long is this living situation with your mom going to be? Because it's not going to be long. Right. Um, I, I wish I wish I had a definitive answer. Um, you know, she, we're mainly here for the sake of stability. She's going through stage four kidney failure. Mm-hmm. Um, so just a stable home with, with, we know our expenses. Um, we, we've known this landlord for 20 years. I've lived in this house for maybe 15. Um, and uh, we know him. So he keeps our rent low just for the sake of being helpful, being a good Christian man. Okay. Um, so I, I would say maybe a couple of years at that max. Um, you know, I do have a girlfriend. I, I haven't considered <laughs> popping the question. Okay. Um, and I haven't you know thought about making that step. I'm, I'm almost 25. So yeah, I still you're just taking care of your mom right now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I think that I, I think going off the so let's give you some action steps getting off the phone today. Number one is the first thing you're doing is you're paying off that debt. And then what you're okay. doing is the money that is left. I want you to kind of divide this in, in, in two separate areas. Um, I love, by the way, this is not an ad or anything like that, but I use Ally.com for my um, HYSA. And I like it because they've got these different buckets. And so you could say, okay, I'm going to put my three to six months in one bucket over here. Right. And in whatever bank you mm-hmm. have, you, you do, do whatever you want. But the idea is I've got this money set aside for my three to six months over here. And I know exactly what that amount is. And I know that I'm not touching it unless there's an emergency. And then whatever's left, I want you creating a three, a baby step three B, which is you just putting aside money because eventually you are going to want to buy a house. And eventually you are going yeah. to want to, you know, maybe you marry this girl, maybe you don't. But uh, with any extra money, I want you being intentional about putting money towards a down payment as well with anything extra that you have um, coming into your monthly budget and even whatever is left out of that savings after you've put away your three to six months. Okay. Sound like a plan? Okay, three-step yeah. plan? That's a great plan. I, I love it. Thank you. You break it down really, really simple. Good, <laughs> good, good. It's a lot less stressful. <laughs> oh, good. Dude, Are, you're, you're good you're hanging good out with dude. your mom like this. Are you, That's, who's taking care of her while you're working? Um, so I work from home currently, and uh, our, uh, my mom is a part of a, a state program that sends caregivers out to kind of look after her, make sure she has what she needs. Um, and, and when they're not here, it's kind of I'm here to you know get her, get her something to eat or something along the lines of that. Okay, that's great. All right, well, you're a good man, mm-hmm. and so sorry that she's going through that, and sorry that you were having to uh, to see that and pro- provide that role. Although I know you're more than willing to as a loving son, but that's tough stuff. It so. Is. Uh, Thank you for the call. Let's go to Ethan now in Newark, New Jersey. Ethan, how can we help? Hi, um, my name's uh, Ethan. I have uh, around $75,000 from inheritance, and I just want to know what I can do so I don't blow it. I have around like a few thousand in my uh, Roth IRA, and I'm making around like $1.6,000 monthly. I'm a waiter. Okay. Okay. Uh, how did you inherit the money? Well, it's actually a crazy story. So my dad's well, aunt, I guess you could say. So my great aunt, she was not fond of the family, and she didn't leave the money to anyone. So it ended up going to not that family and uh, to all the grandchildren. Wow. Oh, so that's your, yeah, so that's your share of what all the grandchildren got? Yes. Okay, good for you. Cool, cool, cool. And did you tell us you're you're making sixteen hundred dollars a month? Did I understand that correctly? Yeah, just roughly. It, it ranges, but yeah. Okay. And that's for, so you mentioned you had a Roth IRA, and then you said I'm making sixteen hundred dollars a month being a waiter, correct? Uh, yeah. Um, are you doing anything at this point to like further education? Like, what's that look like? Well, so right now I uh, 
really I, so I got this this money around like the end of my senior year mm-hmm. so I wanted to take a gap year and so that's what I'm doing right now I'm planning to go uh, next year to uh, one of the local community schools for a x-ray technician job okay and then as overall though uh further education besides that would be just like trying to learn other ways to make money I opened a website um trying to figure that out but it's still you know it's I'm just trying right now. Yeah, yeah no, uh, my screen says, what should I do with this money so I don't blow it? So I think that's uh, hilarious, and I think that's a good way to be thinking. Um, my A1s in A- A123 for you would be somewhere along the lines of this. Well, first, where are you living? What's your living situation? Well, of course, I'm 18, so I'm only, uh, I'm just living with my parents. Right okay, now. you're still with your parents. Okay, so my my first thoughts on this would be, there's nothing that you need to do that's of major need right now. Like you said, the yeah. biggest thing is don't blow it. So I would put it, I'd probably drop it in a high yield savings account for a moment. Cause you're going to need to pull out this money when it comes time for you to get your uh, x-ray tech education, right? How much does that cost? It's actually uh, not that expensive because it's through a community college and they have a good apprentice program. So it would be no more than 6,000. Okay, $6,000. And then you're going to want, at some point, you are going to move out. And when that happens, you're going to want three to six months of expenses when you move out. And you're going to need like first and last month's rent and all of that. So I kind of would love for you to do some research on what that's going to look like. Because my guess is you're 18 and at least in a year or maybe a year and a half, you're going to be moving out on your own. So let's start looking at what that might cost and what that might look like. And then we're setting that money aside and you're going to talk to your parents and you're going to say, look, I really need accountability. Do not let me blow this money. (laughs) I'm not buying a new car. All right. I'm not, you're not going to find me in the club like 50 cent, right? You're not doing any of that. You're going to sit on this. It's going to make money for you in that HYSA until it's there when you need it. Good stuff. I'm not sure Ethan knows who 50 cent is. You could find me in the club. Yeah. Everybody knows that. that. I don't know. All right. This is the Ramsey show. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where we help you win in life, specifically with your money, in your relationships, and in your work. Thrilled to have you with us. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw joins me. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Let's get it started this hour with Kendra, who is in Denver. Kendra, how can we help? Hi, how are you? Good, Kendra. What's going on? Um, I just got married about a month ago. Oh, that's exciting. Way to go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we combined all of our finances, and we had a plan to pay for the wedding, and that plan did not go accordingly. So we ended up going into a bit of debt on top of some pre-existing debt. So now we're just kind of looking for advice as newlyweds to what start it off right and get out of this. <laughs> what happened? Um, we were living with family, so we were able to set the money aside. We weren't really paying rent, and that plan faded. <laughs> and we ended up moving out and getting into a house, which, of course, in Denver, the rent is skyrocketing. Wait, um, y'all went y'all so- up and bought a house? Uh, we actually rent a house. Oh, rent a house. So okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Yeah. So how so much? That kind of took our wedding budget away somewhat, but we weren't really willing to compromise on the wedding, which was not a good financial decision by any means. Oh, any so means. we went into no, debt. But... <laughs> oh, how much money did you lo- did you get, take a loan out for this wedding? 
We took about $32,000 for a wedding? (laughs) Yeah. Please tell me it's not on, like, credit cards. How did you pay for it? We did. We started with credit cards, and I did have some savings, so we paid for part of it as we went. But uh, $32,000 is actually on a personal loan. Wow. What did you spend that on? I'm just curious because I've been married a long time, and I had no (laughs) idea weddings. I know that they can be outrageous, but what did you spend the money on? I got to know. Uh, the venue by itself was about 7500 and that's no service or anything, just the building, basically. Okay. Um, photographers, videographers, that's all. Everything is gracious. I wondered if you just rented a shrimp boat to bring the shrimp in for the reception. It was so expensive. Right? My gosh. So you had, you <laughs> no, had some money, you had some money that you paid cash with, and this is, the 32000 wasn't the overall cost of the wedding. That was the overage that you went into debt for, correct? So, I mean, I think our wedding was budgeted at right about 35 total. So you didn't um, spend did any of your real money. Credit card debt. It, well, we had some pre-existing credit card debt. So we were paying for stuff kind of as we went and paying that off as we booked vendors. But Okay. It, well, okay, so, okay. so much for the uh, so much for the honeymoon period. Oh, gosh. Because now you right? are going to have to bust <laughs> it to pay this off. Um, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, Okay, there's a big red flag here for me. Like, there's something that's glaringly, like, doink, 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 like, glaring its red light. And it's the fact that early on, you guys were hit with a a fork in the road. Like, do we lower, do we lower our budget mm-hmm. and get what we can afford? Or do we just say to heck with it and, you know, put the pedal to the metal and go into debt, right? <laughs> Um, yep. so I'm worried because, and, and I'm worried too, that there was credit cards involved and all this stuff. So you guys have a, a, a mental mind shift that must happen. Um, <laughs> yep. do you see what I'm saying? There's that's the a big bigger, in our spending. <laughs> yeah. So that's, yeah. that's almost a bigger deal for me in this moment than the debt is you guys looking at each other and going, okay, how do we want to live our life from now on? Like, what type of people are we going to be? Uh, what type of adults are we going to be when it comes to money? Are we going to, and this is a conversation, this is the next date night. Are we going to be the type of people that we see um, a, a vacation we want and we see a TV or a car that we want and we go, you know what? We can afford to just take out the payments. I mean, we'll just pay it off. Or are you going to be the type of people that go, you know what, from here on out, drawing a line in the sand, we don't borrow money. And that's first and foremost, you guys both need to look at each other and say, are we going to be the people who decide that we don't borrow money anymore? Yep. We have had that talk. (laughs) And what's the answer? I think we're on the same page. Um, You think? From like watching the videos and stuff online. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. I don't know. (laughs) I just, I got to tell you, you think you're on the same page? I am on the same page. What? She no, she is on the I'm page. I'm ready to jump into it. Oh, yeah, I know you are. I uh, think you're on the page. I don't think he's anywhere near the book. Mm-mm. He's in a mag. Is that he's true? In a, a, a magazine. He's in a truck magazine. Yeah. Where is he? Is that true? Oh, he's not that. Bad. He's not that. Okay, good, good. <laughs> so what's what's your so real quick? What's your combined? What, what's the debt? Not just the wedding. The total debt, and then what are your combined incomes? Yep. So total debt, I calculated it a. About, we're just under 90. I think it's like 88,000. Okay. And can you break down um, the type of debt? Combined. Sure. Um, we have two vehicle loans. Those are both about 16,000 each. Um, I have student loans, which luckily is only about 8,000. Could okay. be much worse. Um, and then credit cards combined, we have about 16,000 left. And then the personal loan for 32 okay. on the wedding. Who gave you that money? Uh, just like a SoFi loan or something. I oh, online. okay. I th- you thought personal loan. I misunderstood. Okay. And what's your combined income? Right now, I'm estimating about one thirty. All right. Um, his kind of varies. So, so you guys can do this, it. but you got to get dramatic with it. Mm-hmm. You got to get real yep. dramatic. Uh, so, so you yeah, called. We, we've. Here. What What was your question for us? Did we Did we answer what you wanted us to answer? Did you ask it? What 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 can we do here? Really just kind of looking for advice on where to start. All right, so uh, I'd start with the cars. Me too. Uh, do you have okay. any equity in those cars? Not really. You're not upside down? down? I, I don't think we're really upside down, but we'd probably break even or be slightly upside down, like $1,000 or $2,000, not anything major. Hmm. 
you know, so first, first and foremost, debt snowball. Like Ken is right. I'd be looking mm-hmm. at these cars, but first we're listing them smallest to largest. So the, the $8,000 student loan technically is first mm-hmm. in your snowball. However, mm-hmm. well, actually, that's not true. Your credit cards, what's the lowest? I'm, I'm guessing it's not just one credit card for 16000 right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's... Um one is about a ten thousand dollar balance, but then the rest of them are all pretty small. $1, okay, $1, so we'll we'll $1, list $1, them $1. smallest to largest and knock out the smallest ones first. So that's <clears throat> that's the overarching game plan of this, and that's how okay. you're going to feel motivated to keep going. So tonight, you guys get off the phone and go, okay, let's put these things in order, smallest to largest. That's thing one. Then next, do you guys have a budget? Are you on a budget at all? Um, I've kind of just like started writing stuff down. All I'm right. Well, we're gonna make sure that you have. You guys. We're gonna make sure you have every dollar, which is the world's best budgeting app on the planet. It's gonna help you guys get control. You're both gonna be able to see it. It's gonna be on both of your mobile devices, on both of your laptop computers, so you can see it. You're gonna be able to see your money each day in real time. What's going on with your money? So, uh, make sure that Austin picks up to get you that. And those are the two keys. Find out what's going on with your money and find as much margin as possible so you can throw that at the smallest debt and that's how you work through this debt snowball you guys can be clear of this in 12 in 24 months james jade i gotta talk about a new idea during the break should i spend it it's calls about wedding budgets and i i'm the judge Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. Jade Warshaw is alongside. I'm Ken Coleman, and we are here for you, America, talking about your money, of course. And then uh, I'm the work uh, personality here uh, on The Ramsey team. And if you think about your income related to work, the environment you're in, the opportunity to grow so that you can increase your income, I'm the guy to take any work-related questions as well. So let's get those in, 888 825 Two two five Temecula, California is where Jennifer is. Jennifer, how can we help? Hi, um, thank you for taking my call. Um, I need some direction and guidance because I'm feeling a little lost. Okay. Um, so I was in a car accident and received a settlement check, and it's two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. So I got into a trade school to pay for my education, and I hated it. Um, so I withdrew from the program and now I'm currently looking for a job. Mm -hmm. Um, I just feel lost. Um, what was the trade? Uh, it was an LVN, uh, program. Help help me out. I'm not, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, nursing. Oh, gotcha. It was just really accelerated and I wasn't grasping the information with how quick the program was. Gotcha. Now, why did you choose nursing? I thought it was what I wanted to do. Why? Um, um, I've always had a desire to help people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when my grandma was sick, it was nice being able to help. 
And um, now I'm just feeling a little discouraged. Sure. I'm in my 30s. Yeah. I have a son who's 14. Mm-hmm. Um, and I need to preserve my settlement. So I just, I don't know what direction to well, I'm going to have Jay jump in on that, uh, on what to do on the settlement and, and make sure we maximize that. But I'm curious on this this nursing trade school, had it not been so accelerated, uh, maybe different environment. And if you don't know the answer to this, that's OK, but I want to dig on it. Do you think mm-hmm. that it would have been a better experience had it been maybe not so accelerated? Yeah, um, I think, um, you know, after my accident, I wasn't I'm not the same, um, mm-hmm. and accelerated is not for me. Yep. So maybe something a little more slower. Mm-hmm. But, so um, that's yeah. the, that's the key because here's what's going on. You got a lot. You got a lot going on. Number one. I know. <laughs> yeah, you had you had the accident. There's some challenges with that. Uh, then you the, you you identify this this trade. You know, going to nursing. I've always loved serving, being a caregiver. Mm-hmm. Is that a fair description of you, a caregiver? Yeah. Yeah. And so you, you identify this opportunity, you get in it, and it's just overwhelming. And you, you're going through a range of emotions right now, I suspect. One is probably yeah. frustration because you you had some excitement about it. The other is probably a little bit of uh, discouragement, as you said, because yeah. maybe you feel you're not good enough. And I don't think that's true. So that's why I'm locking in on this right now. I I don't know that you need to be uh, bewildered because I still think there's a theme here. It may not be nursing or it may be nursing, but it's a different program. Mm -hmm. I just don't want you to get thrown off course because this was a very difficult challenge and you couldn't meet the challenge. I was never good in school. I was never a good test taker. And, and yet there's a lot of good things I can do and and a lot of good things Mm -hmm. you can do. So what about different caregiving options? What about other jobs that are caregiving, but they aren't as nuanced as it relates to the training, maybe, for being a nurse? Have you considered that? Um, I have. Um, I think I'm just trying to see what is out there. You know, I'm trying to good kind of take this opportunity to be like, okay, this is a clean slate. Yes. What else is out there? What else can I do? But it's just, it's so overwhelming, you know, with when you have a child. And what's overwhelming about that right now? Talk to us. Um, I feel just the weight responsibility on my shoulders. Yeah. You know, it's just scary. Yeah. Do you have no income coming in? Um, no, since I quit my job, but I am looking. I'm actively looking because that's priority number one. Okay. And then um, that's what I want for you. So a couple things. And I want I want to bring Jade in on this, the settlement and make sure we don't spin this. But let me to that end. Mm -hmm. I just want you to get a decent job where you can you're you're valued. It's a safe setting and you're making some decent money and you're taking care of you and your child. Mm -hmm. And let's take the pressure of picking this purposeful path off the table for now. Yeah, that's there. I think you're already on the right path, Mm -hmm. but I want you to just let's go. Let's 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 leverage every relationship you have to get a good job with some decent benefits. And let's just breathe. Okay, coming out of the accident and everything. Jade's going to give you some great advice on that. Now, coming back off of off of, you know, getting stable, getting the money invested I want you to then begin to just, because you've got a job, now you begin to look out there, what are the type of jobs that allow me to be a caregiver? I spend most of my day using what you do best, and you've got some great compassion and empathy for people, probably just a tremendous communicator, listener, uh, and and you're going, okay, what are other types of jobs that don't require me to go into nursing? And let's just see what's out there. Because yeah. what's intimidating, Jennifer, is the fact that you just don't, you can't name for me right now two or three other options, but I could give you one. Yeah. So could you work in a nursing home? Nursing homes are always looking for very good people to come in and help. Probably make some decent money, decent benefits. That's just one option. Doesn't have to be that. Okay. But you begin to identify there are multiple paths that I can go. And now all of a sudden it's not so scary. Mm-hmm. But I, I want yeah. to, and we're going to give you some resources. I'm going to give you my assessment, the Get Clear Work assessment, Jennifer. You promise me you'll take it? 
Yes, I promise. Great. It's going to spit out some very detailed information for you about you, give you a purpose statement and give you some direction. I'll give you my book from Paycheck to Purpose that'll walk you down the path after the assessment. But Jade, come in and let's talk about this $250,000 she's got. Yeah. So is everybody fine after this accident? Uh, Yes. Yes. There's no ongoing like health or anything like that, health issues? Um. A surgery, but um, I'm okay now. Okay, okay. And uh, so let's get a let's get a quick financial snapshot. Do you guys have any debt? Anything saved? Like, what's it look like? Um, I save. I'm a really good saver. Um, so ten thousand okay. in my checking. Um, I paid off my car and credit cards. So no. So no debt. Awesome. Debt. Cool. Wow. Um, and so no what's student loans. no student loans? No debt of any kind. Just ten thousand sitting in your checking account. Yeah. And you're calling that like saved money. It's not, you know, it's no, not month to month money. Okay. No. Cool. Um, what's your living situation? Um, I rent a room. Okay. Um, uh, which is 900. So. And I'm guessing you, so your 13 year old son is not living with you. Uh, yes. Um, is. Yes, he is. Okay. Yes. So first things first is like Ken said, we've got to start looking for a job. And then as soon as you secure a job, I want you to start looking for a place to rent. That's not one room, like a nice, uh, a reasonable place for you and your son to live. Okay. 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 And so you're going to start doing that. You're going to start pricing that out and we're going to choose something based on what we're projecting our income to be once we land somewhere. Right. So this is going to require you to do some research. Okay. Because what I want you to do is I want you to kind of walk through, do your best to walk through the baby steps and the ones that you can't quite get to. Let's at least plan for it. Right. So um, you have no debt. So let's put aside out of that 250,000 plus the 10,000. Let's put aside what we think would be about six months of expenses for you and your son. If once you get an apartment, once you get stable, what you think that will look like. And we're going to put that in a high yield savings account aside, not don't keep it in your checking account, keep it someplace else. And then we're going to get that job and we're going to start looking. Once we get those benefits, we're investing 15 percent of our income and we're going to start looking, just be in the market for what what it might look like to buy a house one day. Start doing the math and we're going to put some of that money aside. And then we're going to work with the Smart Vester Pro on the rest of this money. Um, Alec, uh, Austin will pick up and help you get connected with the Smart Vester Pro because I want this money out of sight, out of mind, gaining interest for you. So it's there for you when you need it upon retirement. Good stuff. We're rooting for you. You're going to get there. I promise, Jennifer. You're a brave single mama. Love the single moms out there. They're doing so much. We're here for you. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. We're coming to you from our worldwide headquarters just south of Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Ken Coleman, Jade Warshaw. 
is with me this hour. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225. And out in the lobby, by the way, we have a fabulous uh, studio audience today from all around the country. Uh, hanging out in the lobby, and uh, we invite you to come anytime you'd like to watch the show. And uh, on the debt-free stage in the lobby, next to the fabulous uh, audience that I was talking about, uh, are Chris and Amanda. Welcome, Chris and Amanda. How are you? Good. Doing great. Where are you guys from? Rochester, New York. Rochester, New York. All right. Did you see the guy over there with the Bills that, shirt on? That would be my father. Okay. Ah. All right. Good. We've got a member of the Bills Mafia in yeah. the lobby, so Bills that's fans. always exciting. Uh, all right. And uh, you guys are here because you paid off some debt. So tell us, how much debt did you pay off? We paid off $48,835. Yeah. Wow. And how long did that take? It took us 11 months. Love oh, it. Wow. Getting after it. And tell us your range of income during that time. We started out around seventy-two thousand. By the end of the journey, we were down. We got up to ninety thousand. Way wow. to go! What did you do to bump it to ninety? A lot of overtime. Uh, mm. What do you guys do? I'm a mail carrier for okay. Postal Service. Nice. And I'm a stay-at-home mom, oh. so he's really been working so hard for our family. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Good so were you, you a stay-at-home mom through the whole eleven months? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Way to go. Thank you. That's, That's something. Yeah. That is something. <clears throat> All so, right. So what happened? What was it? Uh, eleven months ago. What happened to make you guys get on this journey and you to work so hard, Chris? Well, it all started with a whole life policy. Uh oh. I actually was at work. And I was loading the truck up next to a coworker who I had mentioned that I was leaving early that day to go sign the paperwork for the whole life insurance policy. And uh, that's when his eyes lit up and went big and said, you got to stop doing that now. Uh huh. You got to l- listen to this show and read this book. <laughs> so, I, And I was a little, you know, yeah, all right, I'll give mm-hmm. it a chance. So I listened to the show for a couple of weeks before I even mentioned it to Amanda or anything. And then uh, once I read the total money makeover, it was game over. And uh, that's when I came home to her. Yeah, he came home and he's like, I've, you know, I've never made this much money in my life. This is the most I've made. And I'm hitting a wall. I'm working 40 to 60 hours. We don't see each other. Like, we can't, I can't keep going on like this. We can't keep going on like this. We need to do something. And we were like taking out of our savings to Mm. pay for bills and do things every month. And we were living paycheck to paycheck and Mm. it just shouldn't have been that way. Yeah. Working too hard to feel that broke, definitely. Right, yeah. yeah, we were just spending too much money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By the end of the month, we we had a nice savings, we thought. But, yeah. But uh, we were just draining it every Oh, every, wow. So every, every time month, you'd we stack up it. the money, you were pulling it back out for bills. Yeah. Like yeah. We, we got a tax return, and we kind of put that away mm-hmm. into the savings. Yeah. And we that was going to be our account of vacation and stuff. Yeah. But then... Uh, it just went to Every bills. month, it was just too much. And so... It was, then then when Chris comes home and he's like, hey, I have the solution for all of our pr- problems. It's a guy on the radio. What was your reaction to that? Were you like, yes, I'm on board. Say less. I'm doing it. Or were you like, wait I'm a like, second. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, who's yeah. telling you that, you know, like, of course, I was kind of like questioning and asking all the questions and not like completely, you know. Mm-hmm. I And then he brought the book home and I didn't read it sorry but um (laughs) I hadn't read it but then like I you know I didn't want to see him so frustrated Mm -hmm. and like stressed out and I was feeling it too and and so I was just like what you know tell me more about it and let's do this I'm on board I love that so what kind of debt was this anyway there was uh six credit cards and two cars two car loans yeah Six credit cards. Wow. wow. Did you sell yeah. the cars or did you pay them off? No, we paid them off. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I still got the car. Okay. Very yeah. nice. My parents were like, we want to help you. Let us like, we're alive right now. We have the money. Let us give you the money. And I'm like, no, I don't want to take money from you. And we actually had like gotten or like transferred our balances over to like 0% credit cards. And we were going to start doing it that way and mm-hmm. pay off as much as we could and, and everything. And then we found this and... You it, realized all that was just a yeah. run around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I heard you say, Chris, that you were already working crazy hours. Yeah. When you came home with all this. Yeah. Did you, I, did you add more hours? I, yes, I did. I was working probably 10 hours a day. And then once COVID hit, overtime was unlimited. Wow. There were so many open spots. Mm. So I was doing probably 12 hours a day. Wow. Six days a week. 
Wow. So what did you guys do? And once you got on board, did you just immediately start slashing the budget? Did you sit down was, and create a budget? What did that look like? It was a budget. Yeah. Um, we've never had one. I never had one growing up. I don't know. You've never no, had one growing I, up. So. I was like, budget? I can do this in my head. Like, we yeah. don't need a budget. <laughs> budget? What? Yeah. <laughs> like, no. Oh, gosh. So when, when you realized, okay, because obviously the crux of all of this is the budget. And once you realized that, was your what was your reaction like? Because I know for me, I used to be like, a budget? Come on. No, yeah. I don't think so. You know, so what was your reaction to that? So it felt kind of suffocating. I'm more the free spirit. Um, and he's more the like, okay, we got to save. We got, mm-hmm. you know, so it was kind of a little suffocating at times, but we just communicated communicate and we talk about everything and you know it's we just keep open communication and we work yeah. the budget it really it's, opened up how how much we were spending on money you know spending money on things we didn't need yeah I we bet. were going out a lot you know it, yeah. it's hard to when you're working a lot it's hard to want to be home make dinner so so what do you say to people because i mean ken can attest to this all the time like people are like you know i don't want to be on a budget it's going to ruin my fun it's going to you know take me out like speak to that person who's got forty eight thousand dollars of debt and they're fighting back uh they're fighting the budget tell them so i would say just you know live well that you say it all the time live like no one else you know it's hard at first and your mind kind of just shifts when you start to like get out of debt little by little you like get excited about it and then like the budget's not so hard and you know you you we really focus on what's the most important to us at the time and we Mm -hmm. budget that money for that and then I don't know we ate out a ton so we slashed a lot of that out Mm -hmm. no more coffee no Starbucks no anything like that and you're alive to tell about it yes you're alive still here what was the most extreme thing you did on cutting the food budget did you do rice and beans did you we did uh, we did a lot of pasta yes pasta Pasta pizza pizza pierogies all the that sounds delicious the three peas that doesn't sound like you're suffering at all (laughs) no that sounds no, delicious. We weren't suffering. I okay. say. So you're not sick of pasta? You, no. You, you no, still, we still eat it to this day. Very good. <laughs> okay, I like that. All right, great. Now, what about support system? We have a huge support system. Huge support system. system. Yeah. They yeah. all came to join us today. Yeah. All right, tell us who all is here, because they're beaming with pride. Uh, I know. I got We got my parents, my brother, Brendan, who's in a wheelchair. Okay. Then I got my brother, Shane. Uh-huh. My father-in-law, Kaz. Wow. My aunt, Nancy. And my sister Kelly. Fantastic. And wow, the behind whole front here row. is uh, my mother-in-law, who's taking care of our baby oh, right now. So. so fun. So everybody was supportive. They weren't going. You guys have lost your mind. Eh, they were supportive. No, no, I mean that's great. Yeah. How much good. of a difference does that make to have somebody supporting it's, you? It's big to it's have huge. somebody cheering you on. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's hard huge. to do it by yourself. Yeah. Wow, guys. So what's it feel like now? It feels um, great. Amazing. I could yeah. cry. <laughs> I know. It feels awesome being here and. Yeah, being able to celebrate with our family, and it's amazing that everybody could get off of work or take the time off, and yeah. it really means a lot to and us. And how old are you guys? Thirty-three and thirty-five. You guys Look are gonna that. be. You guys are gonna be millionaires. <laughs> we hope so. That's we hope the goal. So. No, you will be. <laughs> no, 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 you will be. <laughs> you are. You are on that path. <laughs> Thank you guys can really dream now. You have nothing mm-hmm. holding you back. That's hey. thanks to you guys. You guys, well, yeah. this program that you guys put out, it's, it's it, it does work, but you guys did the work, yeah. and that's the difference. So fun. All right, so tell us uh, about the little one. Let's get her in here. Okay. What's her name this and how old? This is Sawyer. She's 16 months old. Oh, she has so no idea how awesome her parents are right oh. now and her future. That is so fun. Look at sweet Sawyer. That is going to be, is she going to freak out when you guys scream? Uh, yeah. We're not sure what we're she's going to do. We're hoping she's going to scream, too. Right, oh, she'll scream. Scream. So a couple things. We're going to give you a bundle here. We've got the Baby Steps Millionaire book. Uh, and we've got, of course, Total Money Makeover for you to gift to someone else. And uh, so that's our gift to you guys. So let's get to it. Here we go. We've got Chris and Amanda from Rochester, New York. They paid off 49000 in 11 months, making 72000 up to $90,000. let us hear your debt-free scream. Ready? Yep. Three, Three, two, two one. one. We're, We're debt-free! Sawyer had a little delayed reaction, but now she she's did. she's kicking and clapping, and she's excited. That's what this is all about, Jake. A legacy, changing your family tree, and we just got to hear another story. Don't move. More Ramsey Show coming up.
Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw is alongside, and we are here for you, 888-825-5225. So you've got money questions. Of course, we're here for you. Uh, how about something that's related to your money, and that's your work? Are you bored out of your skull? Are you burned out? Are you getting overlooked? Want to start something on the side? Work for yourself? Any work-related questions? Uh, I'm the work personality, if you will, here on the Ramsey Network and on the Ramsey Show. So excited to have all of you with us. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. Let's go to Devin in Kansas City. Devin, how can we help? Hey guys, how you guys doing? Good. What's going on? Hey, so should me and my wife increase our house rent payment? when we will have just paid off our debt. And I can get into that more if you'd like. Yeah, tell us. So you just paid off all the debt in Baby Step 2? Is that what I'm understanding? So we will about the time that we have our contract renewal. Um, so in about March, February, March, we're expected to pay off our, the rest of our debt. And right about then is when we're supposed to sign a new lease for our uh, rental. But we're wanting to upgrade in house size um, because we've just added uh, to our family recently. Tell me about uh, that. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. How many people in the family have just been added? Okay. So we only have three right now. So me, my wife, and then a four-month-old. Um, but we're wanting to expand eventually. So we're trying to find a balance between um, rent payment is going to be much higher, but we're also wanting to save for a house and also baby sure. step Sure, okay. We're All trying right, to sure. figure out how to balance it out. All right, we're going to jump in. Yeah. Okay. So it's you and mama and baby. Yes. Okay. And and what are you living in now? Give me square footage or bedrooms. Just tell me what the size of your current apartment is or house. So right now we, we run a house that's a single um, single layer, 950 square foot, about uh, three bed, one bath, one car garage. We're wanting to try and get, you know, two car garage, maybe a basement if we can. Um, just, just a little bit more room. We were blessed with a bunch of um, house gifts when we got married and whatnot and Got way too much stuff for a tiny little house. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I knew these are all luxuries and whatnot. Um, so we're just what trying to figure out. What do you pay for out, that? We pay 1025 right now a month, which and, is really good. And if you were to upgrade, what would you be paying? It'd probably be more around 1400 So, okay. So we're going up 300 and some odd dollars. Um, I'm not worried about that, Jade. I was worried he was going to say it was closer to 2000 I was no, too. No, 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 no. I'm not that crazy. <laughs> I mean, here's. I don't think you need to move. I, I think you I got a either. stuff problem. I would stay. I would stay too because the oh, bigger. Oh, you agree with me. I, Usually for, I'm for Mr. Once in my life, yeah. I was going to say because I'm Mr. like keep it tight I and know, save no, now I for agree. the house. Because like, well, here's the here's what you have to ask yourself. Like long term, not even really in the short term, you're going to want to buy a house. You said yourself that you yeah. guys are trying to save for it. So four hundred dollars or three hundred and seventy five uh, dollars each month is a lot of money it is and it is. here's my thought i'm like a four month old that's little that's like a football that doesn't take up much space and your wife she's not pregnant yet well, and you if she is that's still nine more months <laughs> i don't care how small it is you have three bedrooms yeah, yeah so no, this, this house is just driving her nuts there's other things are our neighbors aren't gray and i mean there's there's other things that go along with okay it. we just don't like the area per se all right yeah. um, I, we I, I, we're not going to get this deal anywhere else well is that true i don't know well from what i've been we we got this house um in 2020 
So it was kind of like right before everything really jumped up. So yeah. about the same square footage is going about thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars right now. <laughs> in I just, some some areas and locally. Okay. So I I wanna I hear what you're saying that there's reasons. And hey, look, at the end of the you're grown. At the end of the day, you're gonna get off this call and you're gonna do what you and your wife think is best, and I'm not mad at that. Okay, can we hold on, let me jump in because I want you to keep going, but I gotta ask you. How am I supposed to keep going, Ken? Because I'm going to ask a question and let you keep going. I'm not taking over. I'm just joking. I know. I know. I want you to. I think this is a happy wife, happy life situation. And you are the resident wife in, at the desk I today. I am. She's not. How does he handle that? He, here's the problem. And it's not a problem. It's the reality. She has a four month old. So everything is going to get on her nerves. <laughs> that's. Okay. Am, I, See, am I right, Devin? You are right. I, I've been you there. When you got right. a four-month-old, you notice every everything's a problem. Yeah. You can't even have the wrong look on your face, Devin, because that's going to be a problem, oh. too. You know what I'm saying? And so Ooh, I, I've I, been there. I think that it could help them to just take a breath because everything's new. They have a four-month-old. Everything's new and everything's annoying. Y'all are still tired. Cranky pants. Cranky. And we're yeah. not talking about the four-month-old. <laughs> <laughs> you're about to get yourself in trouble <laughs> no i'm talking about him yeah oh I, him not yeah. the wife okay okay i'm deferring i'm not gonna i'm not getting in the middle of that that's why i brought you into that happy yeah. wife happy life deal. happy wife happy life does have something to do with it but i think this is a question of what do you want most or what do you want now Happy and wife. i think well I th it sounds like what they want most is i'm just keeping it real i would stay I would stay. That's what I'm saying. But I she am. wants to move. So happy wife would be her the I, moving. Well, I think we got to yeah. bridge the gap. We got to have a conversation with mama and get have her. a conversation with mama and think about ask yourself, what do you want most? Do we want to be able to buy the home that we want sooner in yeah, life? Or right. are we just do we truly have to move? Because, again, Devin, moving is expensive. Like yes. folks don't talk about that. There's Oof. an expense there. there. You're now uprooting your life even more. So it has the ability to add even more stress because there's the whole interim before you get to that. OK hey, we're settled. So you're about to crank up the, the volume on. I got it. You know what I'm saying? I think I got an epiphany. We'll see. What? This okay. Is, this is up for, this is up for you and Devin to decide. I'm going to take you to task on this, Ken. I, and I'm okay. fine with that. Okay. Uh, I think you have to sit down with your wife and I think you got to literally on paper. Yes. Write down what the increase in rent would be. And so let's just say yeah. it's three fifty a month increase from what you are because you've, you've given us that range. And you write mm -hmm. three fifty times 12 equals and there's yeah. there's your first year Ooh. and you just lay the numbers out and go if we were to save this money for a house mm -hmm. um we can get there by such as you got to cast vision you can't just tell her to hey babe try to get through it because to your point she's tired i love that and I i'll think add one more to it vision. Yeah. i'll add one more to it once you get that number you need to then run that back and go how many hours of work is that because if we're going to replace this income, it means yeah. us working, right? If you're going to say, hey, not only are we going to ratchet up our rent and it's going to cost us, uh, I don't know, $20,000 over the course, $10,000 over the course of the year. Now, what does that look like us mm -hmm. working to replace that money? It's a great call. Right? And now all, all, all of you, a sudden bro. you see what it is. Yeah. So I, I like this conversation, Devin. I like that you guys are thinking about it. I love that you called in the show. Yeah. Thanks yes, for thank calling. You, thank you. Listen, listen, young couples, if I could say anything about this, it's be patient. Think about the long term. Mm -hmm. I'd mm -hmm. suffer a little early on. I would too. To get to the right house in the right place. Yeah. I just would. I mean, you're supposed to be, I mean, Dave says it, and I love how, I love the analogy. Renting is camping. It's camping, you know? And if you get too hung up and you turn it into glamping, then you're kind of defeating the purpose because it's it's a short term solution. Like it's just it's a short term solution while you're getting yourself together until you can buy, because ultimately yeah. that's the goal. Yeah. And I will say this. I have three kids. I mean, there is a day coming for a lot of young couples. If you have that many kids where you need more space. Sure. And and there's a whole lot more expenses coming your way. I would be like, if you need, need, need can. You don't need it. Okay, roll yeah, we'll roll oh, no, it back no, no. on the need. Oh, you're talking about what I said? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were in a smaller house. When we grew up as kids, you know, we were living in small houses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm talking about like if you're in a little teeny house like that, then yeah. you need multiple bedrooms and bathrooms and all that kind of stuff. That, that does get to that point eventually. Yes, but I still say the word need is you do want more than one bathroom. 
Yeah, well, when you have a teenage daughter and two yeah. teenage boys, they can't yes. all share the same bathroom. That's true. That's what I'm talking about. That's Look. what the Coleman's were dealing with. Had to do it. Look, let me tell you. We, we did it before they got to middle school because that was not a sustainable situation. At one point, we lived in a duplex. It was me, my mom, my brother, and me, yeah. and my older brother that would come home from college. One bathroom, Ken. I admire that. I don't. That was tough times. <laughs> I get it, but I, I get it. But I'm saying I know you can do it. That's yeah, the whole you point. Do it. So, you do hey, it. listen, there's coming a time where you got to spend money on stuff. If you don't have to now when the baby's little, don't. Hey, good hour, Jade. Thank you so much, James Childs and all of the guys and the gals in the booth keeping us on the air. Don't move. More Ramsey Show coming up. Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. This is the Ramsey Show, where we help you win in your life with your money, your work, and your relationships. The phone number for you and your question is 888-825-5225-888-825-5225. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw joins me. And uh, we love being here for you and your questions. By the way, the Ramsey Show annual listener survey is live. We want to know, what are your favorite parts of the show? What do you want more of? What do you want less of? What, do you, what topics do you want us to cover? Uh, all these things, we want to know how to serve you best. There's two ways to participate. You can text the word SURVEY to 33789. That's SURVEY. Text that word to 33789 or visit Ramsey Solutions dot com slash survey ramsey solutions dot com slash survey sign up today and you will be entered to win a five hundred dollar gift card just for telling us what mm. you think so be nice to jade and i please well speaking of survey ken mm. uh i have surveyed my comments on social media and we saw that people wanted to hear more about the baby steps yeah. And so we post, I just, the team and I posted a video explaining, just briefly explaining baby steps one, two, three, and four, and it went bananas. And so I thought to myself, it brought in a lot, it brought in like 30 or 40,000 new folks, all new to Ramsey. And I thought it would be good to go through and really explain what we mean when we talk about baby steps one, yeah, just a two, fundamental and three. simplicity of that video and the plan yeah. went bananas on, on Instagram. Yeah. Y'all showed up. Well, it probably wasn't you guys. It was new folks. So just when I think that everybody knows the baby steps, there's yeah, no. still people who don't know what it right. is. And that's great. Let's do that. So this is great. So if you're new to the show, we have seven baby steps and we're going to walk through the first three and some of the general questions around them. So I'm going to tee you up. You good? With okay. That? Yeah. Rapid fire. Right, me. So baby step one is we want people to put a thousand dollars in a savings account for your garden variety, basic emergency. That's so right. the question begs, why a thousand dollars is a thousand dollars enough? No, a thousand dollars is not enough and it's not intended to be enough. Hear me loud and clear. This is just temporary. At the end of the day, if you have a thousand dollars saved as an, as an, an American, you are ahead of the pack because 56% the majority of Americans could not cover a thousand dollar emergency without using debt. So if you have that, you're ahead of the game. 36% of Americans have $0 saved, so you're ahead of the game there as well. So yes, $1,000, it's not enough, but it's enough to get you going. And so you're paying off your debt quickly, and then later on, you'll stock it up. And you can do on. it quicker than you probably think. What do you think? What do you think is a rule of thumb on how quickly you can assemble $1,000 mm, for yeah. nothing? Average person gets it done in 30 days because you're going ham. You're selling stuff. You're working extra hours. You are just literally pulling from everywhere you can to get ham this. yeah go and ham sandwich i've never heard it before if i say that will that be will i be cooler your sons will probably be like who do you know <laughs> <laughs> well they know i know you so they'll clearly think it's you okay good i'm gonna use that one this week I think it's gonna get some eye rolls ham salad at the house ham sandwich but i just say that yeah, just go, ham yeah <laughs> that's all i say you're going ham yeah 
<laughs> All right. See, now I'm learning along with the audience and everybody enjoys that. Okay. Now, so where do they keep it? I said in a savings account that is separate from checking. Why do we say that? Well, because A, you get tempted by it. Some people are more tempted by that than others. Right. I'm a very, I see money and I'm like, well, how can I spend it? Mm-hmm. So keeping it in a separate account, I even like putting it in another bank, like an online bank. I've mentioned Ally before. We don't sponsor them in any way, but I love that. By the way, this account we're not putting like debit cards and things like that attached to it because it's an emergency fund. We don't want to have easily accessible access to it, right? So high yield savings account, um, if you can. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? We're just talking about baby stuff. When you don't have to put in a high yield savings account, yeah. you can just sock it away, you know, put it in your sock drawer, put it in your normal savings account. That's fine. Sock drawer? Look, where I come from. You don't really mean that, do you? thousand dollars in a pair of socks well it depends on what neighborhood you live in uh, okay all right i'm gonna put leave it in the bank put it in a savings all right, account now in i think we got to get to this what qualifies as an emergency that we're going to actually get into the thousand dollars hardly anything that's all, um, hardly anything qualifies for an emergency number one it needs to be completely unexpected all right because some of y'all are like oh well you know christmas is coming around the corner no completely unexpected it has to be completely necessary all right, That's and it. it has to be urgent. All right, real Those quick, three real quick on this one. Why wouldn't Baby Step Three, which is a three to six month emergency fund, why wouldn't that be the first baby step, just to kind of ease our pain and okay. our fear? Why would we not do that? Well, let's take a look. I mean, we already said the stat: most people don't have anything saved, right. and the reason they don't have anything saved is because all of their money is going out of the door in debt payments. So it's hard to have the money in your budget when you've got a bunch of debt to stack up three to six months of expenses, and most folks give up, or they keep dipping in and spending it, right? There you go. So, All right, baby step two, which is we say pay off all of your debts, and it's very specific in baby steps two, Jade. We say mm-hmm. pay the smallest debt first, then move up, if you will. So smallest to largest. Why do we recommend that. Yeah, because we want you to win. And a lot of times that smallest debt, right, it's just a $200 Capital One card or a $1,500 deal, you know, that you have uh, with a credit card company or a little private loan. When you pay that off, you feel that win. And it's like, it just excites your brain. And you're like, you know what, I can do this. And so you pay that one off and you have the extra money freed up and you're able to throw it to the smallest debt after that. And you get that momentum and you get to experience those wins and it does work. What's the average amount of time that we find it takes people to pay off debt in baby step two if they're going after it? Two years or less. Two years or less. Wow. Fantastic. Two years or less. That's nothing. It really isn't in the grand scheme of things. And I want to point out that here, is nothing. as the guy who's always focused on work, let me tell you something. you got to work, work, work. Every debt-free scream I have ever sat in on. Yeah. We have seen their income go up. Yeah. And the more income you make, whether it's multiple side hustles, two full-time jobs, whatever your scenario is, the way to get out of the baby steps faster is to increase your income. Go so Ken, work. But Ken, break that down because for some people it's the core income and some folks just need a side hustle. That's exactly right. If we can't increase it via our core career, so if we can't get in extra hours, if you will, or overtime within that, we're going to go work multiple other jobs, work in weekends. We're working 80, 90 hours a week, depending on how intense our debt situation is. Mm-hmm. All right, that takes us to baby step three. Once we pay off all of the debt, how do we determine if we want to go three months, four months, five months, or six months? Because Dave has given us the range. Three to six yeah. months of expenses. It's all about stability. So if you are a two income household and you both have really solid jobs and you're both healthy, three months is probably fine. If you're a single mom and, you know, you uh, are a server at a restaurant or you, you know, have some volatility in your work, you probably want to lean towards six months. So we're looking at how many incomes are coming in, uh, whether you're, um, married or single like maybe you're single but you've got like multiple income sources maybe three months is okay look at your health these are the things that we're looking at and it doesn't have to be three to six months of your full budget we're talking about what it takes for your household to survive this is a bare bones budget so do we keep it in that high yield savings or do we invest it yeah this is not going in the sock drawer we're putting it in a high yield savings account we are not investing this money because if something happens you need to be able to get to it so do not invest your savings account. There it is, folks. Baby steps one through three. That's why we teach it that way. And don't forget, go get some work with some experience and skill set that you have to increase your income. All right, good stuff. Way to go, Jade. Hey, quick break. Got to pay some bills. Even we have to pay the bills. (laughs) And we'll be right back.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw is with me. The phone number is 888-825-5225, 888 Time for our question of the day, sponsored by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Once the kids are back in school, it's hard to find time for home maintenance. But Neighborly is your source for home repair experts like Precision Door Service, or Dryer Vent Wizard. Incidentally, that was one of my nicknames in high school, Dryer Vent Wizard. <laughs> little side hustle that I developed to make a little extra uh, gas money. Okay. And I, uh, it was self-proclaimed. Okay, Ken. Could not be backed up. But uh, nonetheless, uh, download the Neighborly app today to be ready for all seasons. All right. Today's question comes from Brian in Oregon. He says, I'm 22 years old. I'm married with two kids. Dang. And I'm going to school for engineering. I work around 30 to 35 hours a week at my family's flooring business, and it pays the bills. But it won't get me the engineering experience that an internship would. On the flip side, an internship wouldn't cover the bills. So my question is... Is it worth going into debt so that so I can take an internship to build experience for engineering down the road? No. And it's, it's also a false narrative, Brian. You don't have to have an internship to get entry-level experience for engineering. You're going to school for engineering. So stay in school, finish the engineering, and what is entry-level experience? for someone who gets an engineering degree? The answer is, you know, I don't know. Maybe you don't know, but you can find out. Mm. But there is entry-level engineering jobs. That's where you're going to have to start. Yeah. So we're not going into debt to go get an internship. Heck no. You want to get job placement through the school that you're getting the engineering degree and, and, at least, and, then, and then apply the proximity principle. Yeah. I wrote an entire book on one little thought. It just says this. In order to do what Brian wants to do, insert blank type of engineering, you got to be around people that are doing it and in places where it is happening. So while you're in school, raising those babies, working 30, 35 hours, you're also on weekends and nights having coffee, having lunch, spending time with engineers who are way ahead of you uh, in this in this world, and they're going to tell you their thoughts on how you get placed and how you get in. And if you do it with a spirit of humility and hunger, there might just be some of those guys and gals that you meet with who will open up a door for you. So uh, no to uh, a loan in order to do an internship. No to credit cards in order to do the internship. You don't need the internship. What you need is our, our connections. Ken, let me let me ask you about something. So you just said, you know, get around these folks. Hopefully they will put you on and, you know, give you opportunity. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about gatekeeping. Yeah, love it. And this idea of, I see this all the time, especially with social media influencers, people who start their own business and they feel like they've uh, figured something out and they're afraid to share it because they're afraid if they share it, what they'll give up their piece of the pie. And then that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what are your thoughts on? Yeah. Well, there's some, your thoughts on that. Yeah. There are some people that are going to be very, very scarcity focused. I don't want to help you. You could be competition. I don't want to use some favor, you know, by connecting a young Ken Coleman to this person. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I had people do that. They just, they don't want to use whatever capital is there to mm -hmm. say, hey, would you connect with this young guy and have lunch with him or whatever? Mm -hmm. Do we take it personal? Is, is no, it personal? No, you can't take it personal. No, it's actually about them. They really do have, you know, Michael Easter was just in town this week. They have a scarcity mindset. Everything for them is, I've limited this, limited that, and I'm not going to use my relationship capital to call somebody up and go, will you meet with so-and-so? And so to your point of opening gates, mm -hmm. um, you're going to have some people that aren't willing to do it. They'll either say no or they will ghost you, and that's unfortunate. But you can't take it personally. You just have to go, for whatever reason, it's about them. They don't feel comfortable, and yeah. that's all you can do. And then you go to people who are comfortable. And I've always been that person. Well, I mean, but as, okay, as the person who is in need, like in want of exposure or whatever, how do you, where do you draw the line? Cause there's been times where people have been like, Hey, just, just contact so-and-so. And I'm like, mm, like, I can't, they're further along than me. Like, I don't want to sound like I'm using my relation, you know, yeah. I don't want to use our relationship to try to get yeah. something from them. Like, how do you, well, I've gotten, I've had to, I get that. And I've had to get comfortable with what I think is the most underused question in the world. And that's, will you help me? Uh, it doesn't need to be smarmy. 
It shouldn't be a, too big of an ask. It should be a basic ask. But I will tell you, I've reached out to people on social to do an interview or, hey, I'd love to touch base to do this and nothing. And so I go, all right. Yeah. I'm moving on. But I mean, like an interview, that's something that has the ability to benefit both parties. Yeah, but still. Yeah. They, they'll true. ghost you. They don't think you're a big enough deal. Who knows what they're thinking? Yeah. I can't fill in that gap. That yeah. creates a, an unhealthy narrative. So I just go, all right, it's not it's yeah. not meant to be. I, I interviewed Soledad O'Brien. Do you remember do you yeah. know her name? Soledad, longtime journalist, and I interviewed her for my first book, One Question. And I asked her about, you know, because she had she had made her way into media. And I asked her, she dropped a bomb on me. I said, How do you deal with rejection? And she said, I turn I learned how to turn no into not now or not here. Mm. And that, to, to this day, is one of the best pieces of advice I've ever heard anybody give me. That's and interesting. So you just got to go, because no is very final. Yeah. And no is very personal. Well, let me you add one no to that. You just said no to me, right? Yeah, right. You said no to me. I think I'm a pretty good guy. You know, whatever. Yeah. And it's very personal, very final. Let me add one to that, because I just read something that said no simply means I need more information. I'm a fr- I, I have a little bit of fear, and I need a little bit more information. What do you think? I think that's fair. Interesting. But reg- but but point. Is, I think that's true. But in a situation where you want a job and you get a no, mm-hmm. they may needed more information, but you're not going to get it's a chance to now. give it to them. <laughs> so so now yeah. you, so I think that probably squares. Yeah. But yeah. but the point is, it's not why they said no. The point now is, is what do I do with no? Mm-hmm. And I think for those of us who hear the no, we've got to now turn that into not yet, not here, and and realize. Every no that I get, even if I'm moving forward, every no is getting me closer to the yes. That's right. That's what works. So I, I just think that that's – now, by the way, it's easy for me to say that now with some right. gusto. Right. But I had to eat eat dust and eat dirt and eat nose and all that just along the way. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had a guy tell me once, you know, <laughs> you, you don't have enough talent to make in a top 10 media market. So you, you shouldn't even be trying this. And, and I believed him. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, did we've all been for there. a while. You have too. You yeah. got some rejection stories. Oh, yeah. The rejection is real. But I mean, it is. It's all about how you use it as fuel and you can't let it stop you from asking again or continuing to make those those movements forward. So yeah, absolutely true. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. One thing I want to talk about really quick. This is very important. Uh, we, we talk a lot about budgeting. Yes. And how if you're going to win with money, there is no, is this too strong of a statement? You cannot win with money if you don't know where your money is. That is not too strong. All right. So budgeting is a big deal and every dollar is our budgeting tool. It is absolutely fantastic. We're very proud of it. Um, it is an amazing tool. We can connect it to your bank account if you want to go that far and to go along with encouraging you to budget. We've got an awesome thing coming up, Jade, and you're a part of this along with Rachel Cruz and you're partnering with Every Dollar. What's going on? That's right. So on Monday, the 30th, talking about October 30th, we are hosting one uh, webinar, a budgeting webinar. Now, what Ken was saying is this is a series. I'm hosting them. George Camel is hosting them. Rachel Cruz is hosting them. Uh, But if you want to do a webinar with me, that's totally free. It's this coming Monday, October 30th. The webinar is during your lunch hour, during your lunch break. It starts here at 1130 Central. It's free, guys. It's free to sign up. I'm giving you an hour of my time, totally free. And if you really want to follow along, go ahead and download an every dollar budget. You can can download that for free and you can follow along with us. We're going to tell you how to use this thing because this is how you win. These are the tools that you need in your toolbox in order to win with money. And every dollar is like, like a good like power drill. All it's right. like a sledgehammer, Where man. Do they like go? this is what you need. Where do they go? They go to everydollar.com slash budgeting to sign up. All right, give me a little sing us out here with a little this is how we do it. Come this on. is how we do it. Oh, I wish I could do that. I can't. Why but did I you, know it? Why did you choose Montel Jordan, guys? Because you said this is how we do it. Oh. I was, I'm listening. La, 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 I'm picking la, la. up on what you're laying down. Isn't I that what the you. kids say? I don't know what's no, happening, they don't. folks. I'm going to take us a commercial break and learn how to talk cool. This is the Ramsey Show. <laughs>
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw joins me, and we are here for you, America. 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. And we've got a great studio audience here with us, as we do most days. Great to see all those folks out in the lobby. And then uh, in the lobby, but on the debt-free stage, is Gabriel and Ariana. How are you two? Good, and you guys? Great. Good. Did I say your name right? Yes. Okay, lovely. I didn't want to start off on the wrong foot. You so, did great. Oh, well, thank you. And you guys are from? <laughs> Chicago. Chicago, the Windy City. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. And what brings you down here? A debt-free scream, I'm guessing? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get the numbers. How much debt did you pay off? 200 and hold on let me get my cheat sheet here <laughs> come on, come no on. worries we can wait uh 200 and is it on this 285,302 dollars wow. holy cow and how long did that take 71, 71 months. months whoa wow. 71 months and tell us the range of income during that time 150,000 when we began to about 170 now but okay. it, did, wow. it did fluctuate a lot in, in between sure what do yeah. you guys do uh, I'm a firefighter. Oh, thank you for that great service. That's great. And? Um, I work for Chicago Public Schools. Okay, good. And any overtime in there, I'm guessing? Is that what some of that is? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, prior to uh, becoming a firefighter, I used to uh, um, be partners in a construction company. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was part of, like, the journey and also the income fluctu fluctuation that she was mentioning. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. All right, great. What kind of debt was this? Um, so we had uh, 30, 35302 dollars that was in my student loans, mm -hmm. um, credit cards, and our family car. And then the two fifty remaining was for our mortgage. We Whoa! Paid off our mortgage. Hey, Shondo, that's what I was yes. wondering. I was wondering. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, Dave says we're that's looking crazy. at weird people. Yeah. He likes to say that. I don't yeah. think you guys look weird, but I, <laughs> but, uh, I get the look, point. Look, a paid-off house in Chicago. Yeah. That's yeah. weird. Come on yeah. now. I get it. So, what happened almost six years ago for you guys to take this journey? Yeah, one of our good friends uh, at the church we used to attend uh, was hosting the financial peace class, mm -hmm. and uh, we decided to to take to take mm -hmm. it, and uh, our lives just changed from yeah. that point forward. Wow. Okay, yeah. give me a little bit more. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you know what was going on to where you go? All right, because the way you said that, it was kind of like yeah, we just waltzed yeah. on in there. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, our very good friend, like they, like he said, um, they were giving these classes and they were people that we trusted and then, and they were also following the Ramsey plan and they were very good with their money. And um, we didn't really argue about money, but at the end of every month, we'd be like, we make good money. Where is it going to? Mm. Yeah. Um, so the class really just helped us to change our lives and to really buckle down and to make our money work for us. Wow. Let me ask yeah. you kind of a um, inverse question. Yeah. Out of what you learned in that class, what did you push back on the most? Mm. Um, Probably the like the budgeting was hard yeah. for us because we didn't we didn't budget like like she yeah. mentioned. Kind of at the end of the month, we just kind of. Be like, oh, what happened with all the money? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you both free spirits? Yeah. That was probably the hardest part. And then um, when he was working in the construction business, um, the income fluctuated so much that it was h very hard ah. to budget. Um, I see. But we, we're here, so we made it. It works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did it. Yeah. So uh, what, did you, what was the first debt that you took on? I'm just curious. Um, the first debt that we took on was um, right after the class, we did uh, my student loans. Um, we had like 4000 in credit cards, and then we had a $12,000 um, car loan, and that's the first thing we did. And then after that, um, we sold our house. And um, we made a profit of a little bit over eighty-six thousand dollars. So mm -hmm. we used that to put um, a twenty percent down on, on a new property, and we bought the ugliest house on the block. Wow! <laughs> um, yeah. And um, yeah, we used the rest. We cash flowed uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in a home renovation. Wow! Wow! So that's not including. So it's no yeah. it's no longer yeah. the ugliest house on the block. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Wow. That's so yeah. smart. So what would you say is the key to getting out of debt? Uh, being on the same page and yeah. uh, just um, supporting one another, getting, uh, you know, having a, a core of people also that are supporting you. Like yeah. our family was very supportive. Yeah. Um, our close friends uh, yeah. were very um, supportive also. 
and being content um yeah. and uh just being okay with delayed gratification and knowing that um while we did make good money on paper at the end of the day if we didn't um take these steps then we were not really going to be able to enjoy it at the end of the day that's right um, well you don't have a payment in the world no what happens next um we're just saving for our next uh, investment. I feel like no, we're still. No, you gotta do something <laughs> yeah, to I celebrate. Know. I feel like we're still on the Ramsey plan. Uh, <laughs> we're so deep in right now. I feel like it's so normal. Why not continue until we get, you know, our next investment? I'm giving you uh, homework. This is baby step seven B. Is you need to go and do something fun. Yeah. yeah. There is a cruise in our future. There we you don't go. know when, but oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. We also added two kids. Well, we were yeah. in the process too, so yeah. we're, we're catching Love up. Uh, so when yeah. you say investment, what do you mean? We want to have an investment property at okay. some point. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm still working. We have uh, three kids, and it's so funny because a lot of people say, "Oh, you sold your, you paid your house." Sorry, mm -hmm. um, that means that you don't have to work, and I don't feel like that's the case. I feel like we really were starting over. We have a fresh um, mm -hmm. start. Yeah. And it doesn't end here. No. Uh, we still have goals and we still have aspirations. And What is your house worth? Uh, I'll say about like 700000 now. Wow. Oh, boy. Wow. And what, yeah. do you, what do you guys have in retirement? Um, yeah, we had to kind of slow that down while yeah. we were doing it. I know we shouldn't have. Yeah. <laughs> like 100000 Okay. Yeah. And we're both vested in our pensions. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. So you, yeah. Guys are, you guys are just steps from being millionaires yep. yeah and net worth and you guys are you guys are off and running yeah we're excited yeah you should be <laughs> yeah and um another part of our journey was um there was one point where we were on one income and it was because we had been following the baby steps that yeah. it was okay and this mm -hmm. had been our goal when we when we purchased the house, we said we're going to pay off the house in five years. And because we had been on the, the baby steps plan and we had uh, money in, uh, in our um, emergency. Save emergency funds, it didn't derail us from our plan. And we finished exactly when we said, wow, we that's finish. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You two that. are such an inspiration for so many Thank people you. that are watching and listening today. And we'll see the story in the days ahead. So one of the things we want to do for you is we've got a, a little bundle here for you. We're going to give you uh, Dave's latest book, Baby Steps Millionaires, because you guys are really close to that. And so that's yours. And then we're going to give you a copy of the Total Money Makeover to gift to somebody else to pay this whole idea forward. And so that is our gift to you. Thank All right, let's you. get the kids up real quick. Who do you have with us? Tell us their names and ages. Um, We have Eliana Velez. She's five months yeah okay and then we have oh, wow, um so daniel and nathaniel they're um they're outside yeah, they're <laughs> oh they're, they're outside they're, yeah. they're, they're making fine. their way in they're making their um, way in okay and how old are they how old are the boys um daniel is seven okay and uh, nathaniel is two okay. he is two wow we have so a fun. older one that's not with us right now he's uh had some important things going on with school so good. he wasn't able to make the trip. okay good wow. well you here guys they change are your family tree that's amazing that's, yeah. that's exactly this is right. daniel hey daniel hi, he'll bud. be here one day for his debt <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's right and well now, he won't hopefully have any no debt. debt but his house paid off <laughs> that's right go. has he been practicing the scream yes. the boys yes <laughs> okay look at this all right cuties all right here we go all right, gang, we are ready to go. We've got Gabriel, Ariana, Daniel, Nathaniel, and Eliana from Chicago, Illinois. They paid off $285,000 in 71 months, including their house, making one hundred fifty dollars all the way up to $170,000. All right, gang, let's hear a ready? Windy City debt-free scream. Make it loud. Ready? Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're debt-free! Fantastic. The baby's going, why is everyone screaming? That's my role. Beautiful you know, family. Jay, thoughts on that, that lovely family and an unbelievable future. Look, don't tell me y'all can't do it. They did it in the city of Chi-Town. Yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable story. Wow, this is what it's all about, folks. You can do it, and we are here to help. Don't move. More Ramsey Show coming up.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw is alongside 888-825-5225. Our scripture of the day comes from 1 Corinthians 13, 6 and 7. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Our quote of the day from none other than the king, or maybe the Kang, depending on where you're from. Elvis Presley. The oh. truth is like the sun. You can shut it out for a time, but it ain't going away. I like that. The king of rock and roll. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, boy, we've That's lost enough. control. James That's is about enough, ready to turn <laughs> our mics off. Let's go to Alex, who joins us in Los Angeles. Alex, how can we help? Hey, Ken. Hey, Jade. Hope you guys are well. Mm-hmm. We are. We're having too much fun. What's going on? All right. I need some help. Um, my husband and I have a car loan. It is our last debt other than our mortgage. Um, it's about $39,000 left on the car. Um, it's not our only car, but I also have um, about fifty, a little over $50,000 in some stock that I have with my company mm-hmm. um, from like our stock purchase program. And I'm wondering if it would be a good move to sell the stock and pay off the car one or two three yes 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 Yes. even if it's at a loss (laughs) yes Yes. to sell the stock at a loss because the market's down is that what you're saying yes yeah i mean yes you can't control that it could keep going down exactly and you need to get out of debt and the fact of the matter is we're cleaning up part of getting out of debt is is cleaning up not just debt but but poor financial choices in general and not to say, I mean, look, you invested your money in stocks. It's not necessarily the first place you want to go to make an investment. So we're we're kind of clearing the table here and resetting it the right way. And not only is that paying off debt, but it's also making sure that your money is invested in the right way. And so in this case, yeah, I would totally clear out those stocks and I would pay off this car and you'd be debt free as soon as that money, that cash clears. How good is that going to feel, Alex? Allow yourself to go there right now. Let's just assume we've just paid it off. You're on the phone with the uh, creditors right now. We said, okay, Alex, the car is paid off. In some weird voice like that, how would that feel? Oh my gosh, I just took like a a big breath out. (laughs) Okay, see, we just just role played right into that. This is the no brainer of the century. Love it. Okay. (sighs) Hey, listen, you got to look at this stock as free money. (laughs) Mm -hmm. How often do we get free money? Yeah, I guess I'm just worried because that's kind of, you know, we treat it as we don't look at it ever. And it's just kind of a quote unquote emergency fund. I know it's not in the right place, but that's kind of our. It's not. You know what this is? This is the get out of debt and change your life forever fund. Yeah, it is. Okay. I I just curious what what, at the high point or, you know, you said it's at a loss. What did you start with? Um, it was probably closer to, you know, 65. That's what you put, that's what you put in to start? Uh, yeah, it, it's been growing over the last couple of years. So, you know, when I was buying, it was at a higher, you know, it was, it was uh, lower and then it, I no, think it went up. To my like my question is, what was your initial investment? Like, where did you start? Like, what have you put into it? Oh, um, not, not, I don't know. not, do you see what I'm saying? Like you can look at and say at one mm-hmm. point it was 65,000 and now it's only 50, yeah. but depending on what you put in it, you may have still, do you see what I'm saying? Over the life of it, you still may come yeah. out, may have come out on top if you know what you, what your basis is in it. But anyway. Oh, I need to look at it, but it sounds like I'm just going to sell it. and pay yes. It. yes. Stop. We don't want to think you about are. it. We just want to do it. <laughs> you know. There will be some left in it after I, you know, I still have some money in there. Should yeah. I? Sell it all and then reinvest with a leftover into something else. Uh, just, just make sure you set aside some for taxes because there's probably going to be some yes, taxes on that because be. it's adding to your your income. So keep some aside and then whatever's there, I'd probably throw it in the emergency fund or you can throw it at your next baby step. Yeah. Uh, okay. I needed you guys to tell me this. So thank you so much. You yes. Bet. You're going to be free, girl. That's that car, fun. And boy, that car is going to feel better. It's going to run better. It's going to look better when it's paid off. So that's exciting stuff. Yeah. Very excited. Don't overthink it. Yeah. Just take it care of this there. today. Like today you're, you're on, you're in LA. You still got time to make this happen. Uh-huh. All right. Let's go to Clarice in Tampa. Hello, Clarice, Clarice, how can we help? I knew you were going to do sorry, that. I had to. You no. just freaked me out. <laughs> Clarice, I'm sorry for my colleague and her scary greeting. That's okay. I'm used to it. <laughs> I, know I know you are. I know you are, Clarice. <laughs> How can we help? So, 
My question is, um, I have some money saved up, and I recently learned about tax liens and deeds. So I want to know if I should use that money to get into that or if I should pay off um, my debt. I'm sorry. I misheard you. You said you just learned about what? Tax liens and deeds. Okay. Tax liens and deeds? Yeah. Okay. To get into, like, real estate. Okay. So should I use my like the money to get the properties or should I pay off my debt? We're going to pay off your debt. We're going to pay off your debt <laughs> uh, because I'm guessing you want to get these properties to, to cash flow to, you know, yeah. this whole thing. Yeah. Um, that's big right now. It's big on social media. Everybody's like, this is the way that you can get in the in- into the real I estate. I just really and- want to get out of my career. Honestly. Well, I can help you with that without without getting yourself into more trouble. You need to pay off debt, and we can get you on the right path. Yeah. What are you doing, and what do you want to do? Um, well, I'm a nurse, and um, my husband and I were wanting to start a family in like two years. Mm-hmm. He uh, when he comes home, and so uh, I want just more free time. You know, free time to be home with my children instead of have to go clock in at the hospital. Sure. sure. How much money do you make right now as a nurse? Um, I make one thirty. Okay. Okay. I and, bring home. Uh, that's really good. And so the, your big reason for getting out is more free time. Is that what I heard? Yes. Yes. How much debt do you have? Um, besides our house, um, I have 14,000 on my car and 35, um, for student loans. What about your husband? Uh, my husband has uh, no debt. He's um, military, mm-hmm. and his car's paid off. And what's so, his income? Uh, he makes about sixty grand. Is he deployed right now? He is. Okay, because he you said two years. Is he deployed for the next two years? No, no, he comes home next year. But next year, that's the time frame they were planning on starting a family. Right, and and so right now, I understand you want free time, but you need to pay off debt. You need to, you know, you can't just go from, uh, from your income to his income. He's not going to be thrilled with that right away. Is he? Uh, no, not at all. Well, here's the thing though. So why don't we just do some nursing? That's maybe a little bit different rhythm in a different place. You've got some options. I do. And I'm trying to do that while he's gone, while I have the time, but I'm just I just really want to get out of it. So I was like, if I can get a property and no. like use the money that I have in no. my you're, you're, that's account, not you're creating more you're creating more problems to solve a problem that's actually pretty easy to solve. Number one is you guys make one hundred ninety thousand dollars a year. That's a great income, and you got fifty thousand dollars, forty nine thousand dollars of debt. Right? You can knock that mm-hmm. out so fast. You don't have kids yet. You guys, like, if you went on a bare bones budget, you would be out of debt in less than a year. Less than a year. If you guys decided, hey, instead of living on 190 this year, we're living on 140. 140, that's still double the average income, more than double the average income. So it just takes you guys quickly going, you know what? Let's knock this thing out. Let's be out of debt in eight months, in nine months. And then when you're out of debt, you suddenly have freedom. You go, okay, now what's the next conversation? If we have kids and we decide that I want to be a stay-at-home mom, we have to decide, okay, are we willing to live a lifestyle on 60? Maybe his income goes up slightly. I don't know what his career trajectory is, but can we live a lifestyle on $60,000? And if not, maybe that looks like, okay, is there something that you can do part-time to where maybe you're not bringing in 130 anymore, but could you bring in another 60? Could you bring in another $50,000? And so I think that there's a lot of conversations and a lot of ways to make this work for you, Clarice. But I'm telling you, what is not an option? And please cross it off your list. Use a black Sharpie to where you can't even see through it. We're not going to buy real estate and go deeper into debt, hoping that there's an opportunity to cash flow or rent. And we're certainly not going to do it on multiple properties. Trust and believe that's a terrible idea. Great advice, Jay. Thank you for the call, Clarice. And to the rest of you, thank you for joining us here on The Ramsey Show. Thanks to our fearless leader, James Childs. Hey, we'll be back before you know it. This is The Ramsey Show.